Bum Fights Volume 1. This is the greatest shit ever made in existence by mad woman, cat, dog, horse, sheep. Doesn't matter who the fuck it's made by, okay? Uh, and it's so good, in fact, that the people who made it are in prison. That's how good this shit is, man. Uh, <laughs> it's so amazing. It's one of those things where you have to watch it before you die. Dying and not having had watch bump fights is like dying a fucking virgin, okay? This is something on the bucket list. You gotta watch it. And it sucks that it's banned in multiple countries. Uh, for when I know it's banned in the UK, and which just fucking sucks. You know, fuck you red coats over there that are just, you know, getting rid of something that's so amazing. This is a fucking brick of gold of a mixtape slash shockumentary. But of course, I got a lot of people who do live in the UK who are patrons. Which, if you're Rise and Conquer, I'm going to show you almost the entire fucking thing. Just going to cut out a couple sexual scenes. Uh, but you're going to watch the whole entire thing so you'll be able to get past that bullshit. Um, if you don't know what bum fights is, it's a group of guys who got together. And they literally give homeless people nickels. You heard this right. Nickels. To do stunts that are like 10 times funnier than the ones in Jackass. I mean, these guys are running headfirst into shit. Just vandalizing. Uh, they're fucking grabbing shopping carts. Riding into and crashing into shit. And they're fucking each other up. There's bum smoke and crack inside this mixtape. Um, and there's also a whole bunch of like street fights that are thrown into it with kick-ass fucking music. You got some main characters like Donnie and Rufus. Which are just very infamous characters throughout the bum fight series. And they actually get into a fight. And Rufus breaks his ankle. There's a point where he literally... Literally, they piss in a 40 ounce <laughs> of beer. They fill the whole thing with piss. And they give it to a bum. And the bum's drinking it. And he's like, oh man, that's some good beer. That's some good beer. So he probably got that confused with fucking Budweiser. Because that has to be the nastiest piss water fucking beer on the entire planet. Uh, they start lighting homeless people on fire. They literally jump on homeless people. Put zip ties around their ankles, duct tape around their arms. And they abduct them. Put them into vans. Drive 20 miles that away. And they ditch them there. <laughs> It's awful shit, uh, but it's so great. It's got to be the greatest shit ever made by mankind. I mean, you just got to watch it. Fuck a review at the end, because I'm telling you right here, this is an 11 out of 10. It's one of a kind. You have to watch this before you die. And what sucks is that it's pretty fucking rare, um... Because if you try to sell on Amazon, eBay, they usually get rid of those listings very, very fast if you see it there. Um, and just every place where you sell shit like that. And the only way to find it, uh, I found it online a couple months back, but I downloaded it. Can't remember exactly, but I will be showing almost the entire thing on Patreon as per usual. So that's fucking cool. Now, before I get into this review, like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Support the Patreon. Thank you so fucking much. Bunk, uh, broke a 500 patrons once again. Um, so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I'll be showing the entire thing on Patreon for Rise and Conquer as per usual. Now, let me settle the fuck down, okay? Because my, my energy's up here, okay? My energy's up here. Let me try to bring it down a little bit. Bump Fights Volume 1 was released in 2002. There's about four installments of this, which is going to be like the greatest things on earth, okay? I have the first three. I need to find the fourth one, which is going to be a pain in the ass. And it's made by uh, Ryan McPherson, who, from what I know, he went to prison, had to serve like 280 hours in a homeless shelter uh, as community service. Didn't do that. Like, he ended up fucking breaking that probation or whatever. And then he ended up having to go to prison. So that's pretty fucking dope. Uh, and then he ended up selling the rights to, like, investors. So the second, third, and fourth one apparently aren't by him. Or, like, uh, they got footage and it got put together. Who the fuck knows? I'm definitely going to go over that later and the later and so much. But as of right now, this one is made by Ryan McPherson and a couple of his friends. And um, it's 56 minutes and 15 seconds long. Almost an hour of the greatest... Adrenaline rush you're gonna get in your entire fucking life, okay? It's hard to sit still when you're watching this. You just want to get up and swing at the fucking air because you got some amazing street fights in here, man. And don't get me wrong, I love mixed martial arts. I'm a martial artist myself, kickboxing. You already know my fucking whole shit. Uh, and I just saw a surreal game beat the fucking dog piss out of Derek Lewis. But there's just something about watching two street fighters just ham at it. You know what I'm saying? They're not skilled. They're not sitting there trying to set it up. They're not sitting there trying to say, hey, how does he react to a feint? How's he trying to react to my jab? Can I hit him with this or hit him with that? Nah. It's just two motherfuckers who are down for the course trying to swing each other's heads off and it's just the greatest most primal shit you're gonna see in your life and there's so many fights like this where you see the underdogs making comebacks and just the greatest thing ever mixed with bums doing these crazy ass stunts and smoking crack and drinking piss and taking shits and, and vomit and there's one part where you see like this bum woman give a blow job which is fucking disgusting um and they're ripping teeth out of these bums mouths too uh, it is uh, <laughs> I can't even, I'm not even coherent. This shit is crazy. 116 clips that I counted, man. 
Woo, baby. I can't wait to just jump into this shit right now. And I just want to watch it again. I've watched this shit like seven or eight times. Usually for reviews, I watch it three times. Four, I watched this shit like seven or eight times in a fucking row. And I want to watch it again. And, and that's before. I even watched it like two to three times with my brother. Okay. So I watched this shit like 11 to 12 times. And I want to watch it again. This is how good it is. Uh, but we're going to go ahead. We're going to jump into the motherfucking white boy. Inside of this movie, you got 116 clips, and out of those 116 clips, 59 are just fucking funny. I mean, I might as well just call it hilarious at this point, because you got bums running headfirst into things, crashing in shopping carts, you know, uh, there's a point where Rufus jumps off a swing set and just eats absolute shit, uh, bums getting lit on fire, getting abducted, <laughs> it's so fucked up, uh, but yet yeah, so funny. Then you got 33 clips that are violent. Now by violent, I mean like, you know, bums fighting each other. You got other people getting into fights and shit like that. Nothing too crazy. You got seven that are just downright gross. Like uh, the bum drinking piss. Like that's still hilarious, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it's just still fucking disgusting. Another thing is you got a bum whose tooth gets ripped out. Got another bum who shows off his grill and his teeth are just fucking hammered. Then you got seven clips that are animal oriented. Like there's parts where it shows hurt animals. Uh, an animal being eaten by maggots. And there's another part where it shows a dead deer corpse inside the street with a cigarette in its mouth. Which is a very, very infamous clip that I've seen in multiple mixtapes. But that's originally from bum fights. Then you got five clips that are sexual. Uh, you know, like a bum giving a fucking blowjob. And you also got this chick that they like to put in uh, as transitional uh, things. And yeah, she's pretty much half naked, pretty hot. So they use that pretty often. Then you get three clips that are vomit, which is uh, used as transition after seeing the bum give a blowjob. Then you see three guys just absolutely fucking puke everywhere. Then you got one clip that's scat, which is one of the worst scat clips I've seen in a minute. And then you got one that is just gore, where it's like showing some sort of knee surgery. So with that shit being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and get right into the review. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into this shit. And as I said before, uncensored versions are going to be on Patreon. And if you Rise and Conquer, you'll be able to see almost the entire thing. Because I do got to cut out a couple of sexual things in here. Because it shows some Peters, which we can't show that on Patreon. They're going to suspend my account and fucking delete my shit again. Uh, but besides that, you'll be able to see 99% of it. Especially if you live in the UK, it's banned over there. So make sure you become a patron and watch it on my shit. What are they going to do? Come over here and fucking arrest me. They're going to suck my dick. That's what they're going to do. Can't do shit to me. Can't touch me. I'm American. You know what I'm saying? It can't do nothing to me. I'm fucking invincible. I'll sick my fucking bald eagle on them. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the first clip. You get this guy who's drinking from a water fountain, minding his own fucking business. And this chick just starts blindsiding him. And she's like, what's up? And then he just starts slapping the shit out of her. Just one, two, three, just slapping her. And they're fighting in a bathroom. Like, you know these, um, these park bathrooms where it's a water fountain in the middle you go here for female and here for male bathrooms and they just start fighting they work their way into like the female bathroom and she's against the wall he's slapping her and she turns her head away like she ducks away and he comes up with this fucking just this ah he just sticks her with a good one like a nice uppercut off to the side and it cocks her fucking head back like this bitch's cranium touched her shoulder blades okay she got hit with a good one uh and then after that it kind of like disengages and they grab garbage cans like it's fucking ecw and they just kind of threaten each other and then it's like a stalemate and then it just you know dies down you get an intro for bum fights but it's cool they jump right back into the action we're gonna go a million miles per fucking second pedal to the metal you get a whole bunch of scraps a scrap after scrap People just throwing shit, right? And it's highlights of scraps. So there's none of that boring ass, uh, fucking mundane shit. You know, it's not like um, boring grappling, cause you know grappling and mixed martial arts very entertaining, high level shit. But if you see it in a street fight, it's just two guys grabbing each other's shirts. You know, just swinging in a fucking circle like a bunch of pussies. Uh, but this is just guys knocking each other the fuck out. One dude gets kicked in his face like messy. Uh, another guy just absolutely gets leveled by a car. He gets punched right in his face. Knock the fuck out. Bounces his head off the pavement. Just, I'm pretty sure he's dead. Because that was a good hit. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just turned into a sack of shit and splat the ground. Um, then you get Rufus. Main character of bum fights. This guy's like the Goku of bum fights, if you put it that way. And he's like, it's bum fights. You know what I'm saying? Gets you a little bit hype. Lets you know what this is. Um, then you get a chick rubbing her tits, which we're going to come back to her. Because she's kind of like that cutaway thing to kind of break up the dead time before they go into another clip. You know, like uh, the transition. There we go. That's what she is. And it helps you, you know, get through the clips instead of just skipping to one to another. Uh, and they got a lot of different transitions in here, which is pretty cool. So it shows a guy getting kneed in his face several times by Alistair Overeem. Damn near. Because he was just giving him some good ones to his temple. Uh... <laughs> Right here's some funny ass shit. 
So he's talking to this homeless guy, which this homeless guy gets the worst treatment on bum fights thus far. And you're going to hear how shitty this guy is treated. So he's standing there and he's smoking. And the guy talking to him is like, that's a dope hat. That's a really nice hat. And while he's saying this, you can see his hair is kind of like mine. But instead of like being smooth and silky, it's very dry and it looks like a fucking bird's nest. Uh, if it was made out of more mud and sticks and shit. And so it's very flammable. So you got his friend to the side, he has a lighter, and he's lighting his hair on fucking fire while he's being distracted because he's being complimented for his amazing hat. Uh, and his head is on fucking fire, doesn't even notice. And his head's on fire for like five to six seconds. It's like Michael Jackson from the Pepsi commercial, doesn't even know his head's on fire, just still fucking dancing. And it takes him like five to six seconds to really feel the heat, and he's just patting it off. <laughs> uh, it's the funniest shit ever because, again... After this next skip, this guy gets even worse treatment, which is just terrible. Uh, you get this brown kid versus this blonde kid. Uh, I don't know if the kid was like uh, black or maybe he was Spanish. Who the fucking knows? You know, not that important. But it plays a song called Puppet Show uh, Happy Campus. This is fight music right here. You don't need some Eminem spitting some rap. Until I collapse, my ass claps. You don't need that shit. You need some fucking rock. You need to make that shit bang. And you need to fucking slug it out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so right here, you get this brown kid versus this blonde kid. And they're just throwing. They're just scrapping. And this brown kid just keeps throwing them side to side like he's a sack of shit. Uh, and then at a point, he gets on top of them. I don't know what move or technique this is, but he starts riding them like a pony. Uh, it It works. So it's got it's got to be a good move, okay? It worked, uh, and he goes through this, this really shitty armbar, which just made no sense. And he grabs him by the back of his head, and he just starts trying to like strangle him backwards. And at a point, he just starts bouncing his head off the fucking concrete multiple times, and he just starts fucking up this blizz bonk. He gets his ass whooped, okay? He starts getting his head bounced off the pavement several times. <sighs> Man, talking about this just getting my blood running. And it sucks because later I got kickboxing practice in like two to three hours. So I gotta I gotta go get this out of my system. Um anyway, you saw that homeless man who got his hair lit on fire. Uh so what happens is they literally piss in a fucking 40 ounce. The same homeless man who got lit on flames is, is sitting in a car and they piss in a 40 ounce, right? And they give him this 40 ounce, and he starts guzzling this shit. He starts gulping it. Like, this motherfucker's like in a Edward 40 hands contest. And he's just drinking that motherfucker down. And my favorite part is they give him an interview, and they interview him and ask him how the beer was. Like, was it a good beer? He's like, yeah, it was a great beer. He's like, a little bit salty. He's like, nah, it wasn't too salty. <laughs> and he's like, but I would have another. I would definitely have another. It's just like, God, he literally drank piss. Uh, must be a Budweiser fan. That's probably the fucking issue. So you can't tell the difference. Budweiser is the shittiest beer on earth. You can't change my mind. Greatest beer, Heineken till I fucking die. If you can't notice some of the Heineken bottles over here or my drinking contest on Discord, which you should come and see. I'm 4-0 and right now. Drinking contest. Heineken, baby. Till I fucking die. After that, you get this curly-haired kid and um, a blonde kid. And they just start scrapping with each other. Now, at first, it was kind of shitty because when they were swinging their arms, it looked like they were flailing. You know what I'm saying? Like they were drowning in a fucking ocean. Um, but then at some point, I don't know what happened. Like a switch went off. And they grabbed each other by the collars right here. And they just started wailing in each other's faces just one after another after another. Just fucking sticking it in each other's jaws, right? Uh, and they just eat. And they just give and they receive, okay? They're just fucking giving each other brain damage. Uh, and then a guy breaks up. He's like, all right, all right, stop, stop. Take off your shirts. You know what I'm saying? So you can't grab each other no more. Which kind of sucks because that was pretty good. Like a fucking hockey fight. Uh, but they take off their shirts. And there's just something that... I gotta tell you, you're either a fighter or you're not. You either want that shit or you don't. These motherfuckers wanted that shit. Because as soon as they took off their shirts, they immediately stepped right back up to the plate and started eating again. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but the blonde dude is just walking forward and he's just eating a lot of hits, man. Like, he's just fucking getting his ass whooped. Reminds me of Sean O'Malley versus Chris. Just kept walking forward, getting hit. Uh, and what, fuck, what fucking just ruins it. As a curly haired kid, he trips and he falls on his back because they're fighting on dirt. You know, there's mounds of dirt and he just trips, gets his foot caught, falls on the ground. So the blonde kid's now on top. It cuts away to kind of put other stuff in between, but we get back to this fight. So that's kind of where it ends for now. Uh, blonde kid's on top. Uh, so you get another scrap, right? And these dudes are just leaning to the side and throwing these fucking haymakers. They're turning each other's heads into pinball machines. I mean, you want to talk about CTE in your 20s? This is where the fuck you get it. And they do this with three solid minutes you just don't think 
that you see street fights. In 30 seconds, they're usually gassed out. They're heavy breathing, hands on the knees. They're sweating profusely. Nah, I don't know where these guys got the cardio, but they were just throwing haymaker after haymaker for like two to three solid minutes. And at a point, they kind of grab each other up. And one dude goes for a headbutt. And when that other guy gets pissed that he tried to headbutt him, so he pushes him off, disengages, and swings a nasty-ass hook that lands flush and just cleans this motherfucker's clock. Okay, he just absolutely wots him in his face. It was a good-ass hit. So, and uh, kind of cuts away there and we're gonna make this comparison right here So remember when I said this chick's gonna come back when they get into her picture of her right here um, Now she's kind of like I guess the mascot woman here um, And you got her compared to like the felony fight chicks felony fights is very similar to bum fights and the chick from Felony Fights is fucking disgusting, okay? She looks like some incest baby. She looks like Chuck Liddell's wife. Uh, a, a two on a good day, maybe? If I had beer goggles and was fucking blind and blindfolded, maybe a two. Uh, but this chick from Bum Fights is fucking bad to the bone, baby. Oh, she is a motherfucking problem. To an extent, okay, the brown skin is what's really doing it for me. Uh, but she kind of does have, like, these linebacker shoulders. She kind of got some wide-ass shoulders, okay? And on top of that, she got these long-ass chimpanzee arms. Like, she likes monkey bars or some shit. Uh, but at the end of the day, she's pretty fucking bad, okay? Uh, to get a chick like that for a mixtape, you really can't complain. Uh, if her arms were, like, two feet fucking shorter, and her shoulders didn't look like she fucking, you know, squats 450 pounds, and shoulder presses, like, 200, then I'd be good. Otherwise, she's still pretty bad for what she is. It's just keep it like that. She got a supermodel body, but I ain't in, I ain't even into supermodels like that. So I'm not some fucking limp dick fucking incel. So let's go ahead and go on to the next shit. That curly hair kid versus the blonde kid. Remember when I said it ended on the ground? Um, they kind of stand back up. They work their way back up. Now here's some pussy ass shit that kind of bothers me. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's a street fight. If you're in a street fight, there's no rules. So stop trying to make rules. There's no sanction. There's no fucking USADA. There's no drug testing. There's no referee. You're in a street fight. You're in a street fight. If someone bites you in a street fight, guess what, bitch? You got bit in a street fight. If someone sticks their thumb in your eye in a street fight, you just got eye gouged. It's a street fight. Someone hits you in the balls in a street fight, you may hate it, but it's a street fight. There's no rules. You know what I'm saying? Um... So this guy, the blonde kid, pulls a pussy-ass tactic. I hate it, but it's a street fight. He grabs the fucking curly hair kid by his hair. Pussy shit, okay? Straight up. But it's a street fight. He pulls him by his hair and keeps kneeing him in his face. It's just one after another after another. And this kid is just eating them shits, okay? He is sucking his fingers KFC style, just eating it, okay? Uh, and then somehow works his way back to the ground. And then the curly hair kid's on top. And he actually wins the fight at the end of the day. Uh, which is crazy enough. But I gotta say this is the most disturbing thing that I, I've actually seen throughout this whole mixtape. Uh, that when the curly hair kid stands up, he has a leopard printed boxers. That was disturbing as fuck. Well, who, the, who wears leopard printed boxers? That shit was disturbing. What is that? You know, who made that wardrobe choice for you? Or maybe you made it for yourself, but it was a very bad fucking choice, okay? No one wants to see that shit. I would have preferred, you know, those uh, cartoon boxes where they're white with the red hearts. That would have been a ton better, okay? That was just weird. Uh, then you get this whole entire fight in the street. Another street fight, because again, a lot of street fights in here. Um, got these two guys, and one was like, hey, you stole from my mother. And <sighs> he tries to fight for his mother's honor, but he gets fucked up. Which sucks. Imagine trying to fight for your mother, but you get your ass whooped. And this guy looks just like Rico from WWE, which if you don't know who Rico is, probably one of the saddest stories in WWE history. I mean, you got Kane. His whole entire gimmick is that he's a demon. John Cena back in the day was Thugonomics. He was a gangster rapper. You got Triple H, King of Kings, a cerebral assassin, the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. And you got Rico, whose whole entire gimmick is just that he's homosexual. Imagine spending 20 years of your life, thousands of dollars to become a professional wrestler, working your way through the indies, injury after injury after injury, finally make it to the big leagues, and they're like, well, you're going to be gay. And uh, you're going to go out there and you're going to kiss men and hump their butts. Literally, that's what he did. Those were his moves. He would grab a man and kiss them on the mouth. He would hump their butts. He would, he would grind his penis on their arms. If that was me put in that position, I'd go back to wrestling at fucking high schools for $20, okay? Uh, it just sucks to know that you got that far. Just to be given the worst gimmick in WWE. It was funny. It was funny. Worst gimmick in WWE history, but it was still fucking funny. Uh, but man, that fucking must have sucked shit, man. Must have really sucked. I would say suck dick, but of course it does, you know? 
Uh, after that, you got this guy, which this is kind of like the transition. He grabs a stone, throws it, and just takes a piss. Then it gets into the next clip, and you get Rufus. It shows his origins. And um, Rufus, again, the main character, he's like the Goku, the Steve-O, if you want to put it that way, of bum fights. And they pull up to him. He's on the side of the road. They're like, hey, we'll give you a nickel, <laughs> right, uh, to do some shit for us. And he runs head first into, like, a thing of crates that you see in, like, a back of a Walmart. Um, he runs head first into, like, a shipping crate, those massive fucking units. Head first just completely compresses his fucking neck because, you know, spines are for pussies. Who needs a spine? Uh, after that, he goes ahead. He jumps into a bush, gets in a shopping cart, and crashes. Ugh. Take that shit, but you still on eBay for six ninety nine. He tumbles down a rocky hill, and the way he's tumbling just looks like absolutely brutal. Okay, he looks very like loose. He looks unconscious to a point, and it's a very brutal tumble down a very rocky, dirty, steep hill. So this shit probably hurt like a motherfucker. Um, and he just keeps on doing crazy ass shit. And at a point, they start beating up a fast food speaker, just doing haymaker after haymaker. He also jumps off a swing and just looks stiff as a board and smacks right into the ground. And mind you, Rufus is probably like in his 40s or 50s at this point, uh, missing teeth. He's homeless, so his body is just taking damage that it just it, it won't recover from. Okay, this is permanent damage. Which, from what I know, Rufus is actually dead nowadays. Not because of any of this. He actually recovered from that and had a good life going for him. Um, but he did die, I believe, in a car accident or something like that, which sucks. Rest in peace, Rufus. Guy's an absolute fucking legend. Uh, after that, you get this 200-person crowd, right? And in the middle, it's kind of like a mosh pit, but mind you, there's no concert going on. And there's a whole bunch of people fighting. There's just a whole bunch of scraps, right? Uh, and everybody stops fighting because there's this one dude who goes just laid the fuck out. He is sleeping, like Family Guy style, with the arm behind the back, just absolutely just leveled. He's in Snoozeville. He's fucking snoring. Uh, and somebody says that he got hit in the head with a wrench. Thou fucking do it. Okay, that will put you out. Someone hits you in the head with a wrench. Thou do it, okay? Probably got a crack skull too. And a fucking, like, contusion and all this other shit. His brain's probably ble uh, bleeding and shit. He's good. He's, he's done. Well, he ain't good. Well, he's good to be knocked the fuck out, but he's done, okay? Uh, you don't you don't recover from some shit like that. You got hit in the head with a wrench, you don't recover from that. Especially if it's a monkey wrench. You get hit in that, your head's probably going to blow up in two pieces, okay? Um, after that, you meet T-Bone. Who's T-Bone? He's a fucking crack dealer. And obviously a crackhead as well, just look at him. And when he smiles, his teeth look like a fucking piano keyboard. You know what I'm saying? Just black, white, black, white, because all the gaps. And he's like, go ahead. He's talking about how he's selling crack and all that other shit. It's nothing crazy right here. Man. And right here is just where the insanity takes a whole nother level right here, man. You get the bum hunter, where it's a guy pretending to be Steve Irwin. You know Steve Irwin, the guy who was, you know, fucks with these marine animals. He actually died back, I want to say 2007, 2008, 9-ish, uh, because a stingray stabbed him in the heart with its, like, spear thing, tail, whatever the fuck. Uh, which reminds me on YouTube back in the day where they used to have Steve Irwin death videos where it would show a video of a guy swimming to a stingray and it's so low quality and they would make it small that you'd put your face close to the screen it would pop up the exorcist face with a loud ass screen. <laughs> And it was a scary pop-up. This shit used to scare the piss out of me. I remember I fell for that like three or four times as a kid, man. Scared the piss out of me. But anyway, he pretends to be Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter. And they're like grabbing these bums right now. Here's where they start duct taping these bums. Now, the first one is crazy because it's two versus one. It's Steve Irwin, Steve Irwin, and this other guy who are wrestling down this bum. And they're trying to, you know, go ahead and mark him up. And this bum is putting up an amazing fucking fight. Like, he, I don't know if there's such thing as bum strength. You know, there's retard strength. Maybe there's bum strength. Or maybe these two guys are weak as fuck. Who knows? But just know this bum put up a fight and wasn't going down. Um, and they were just unsuccessful. This bum put up a great fucking fight. Uh, but at the end of the day, they ended up did measuring his shoulders. And they marked his face with a marker, but, you know, they weren't able to, you know, tape him up as per usual and get his hands all knotted up. They, they couldn't do it. This guy was just insanely strong. Uh, but then they go and find another homeless guy. They, du <laughs> they duct tape him. Uh, man, this is so fucking terrible. It's funny, though. It's funny. Uh, they duct tape him up and they start talking about his clothes. Just roasting his clothes, how he got him from Goodwill and all this other shit. And he's doing it with the Steve Irwin accent, so it's pretty fucking funny. Uh, and right here, we're going to cut off after this last clip. You get the executive producer who gets into a street fight. So, and fuck the fact that they're using, you know, street fight clips from other people. The executive producer himself gets into a scrap. And the dude who's scrapping with is bigger than him. He has, like, at least 90 to maybe even 100 pounds on him. 
Um, and, and he wins too. The executive producer, he's upright. He has his hands up. And it's very generic kind of stance. Very upright, forward stance. And this bum wraps his hand, right? And he's trying to look for a clean one. Uh, but this producer keeps backing up. He's like, one, two. Just one, two. The jab straight, jab straight, jab straight. And they're quick. They're quick. Um, now, he's not putting his hip into it. So there's no real power. But they're quick. They're landing. They're getting him. And that's all that fucking matters. And he just keeps backing up and just keeps jabbing him the fuck out. Hitting him with a good straight and just busting his face up. And the bum ends up getting his ass whooped. Even though he was like 100 pounds heavier than this dude. Much bigger. Gets fucking washed. Uh, so with that being said, we're running out of time right here. I'm going to catch you back in a bit. I right, we're back. We're going to pick up right where we left off. Um, so it shows a bum who whips out his fucking flaccid cock and shows that he has a cockroach cock tattoo. Uh, so there's that. And he also has a whole bunch of uh, other tattoos and he has a piercing on his penis. I, I couldn't understand dick piercings, okay? If you do that shit, you got some fucking problems. You really got some problems. Uh, I'm not a huge piercing person either. I understand ears nose unless you get that fucking bull ring that door knocker in your nose um but the second you start you know piercing your genitals you got fucking problems okay you really got some problems you you need to sit down and talk to somebody uh after that you get this compilation of just vandalism uh one of these people grab a bat and just start breaking in house doors you know the glass house doors that you usually have in the back of your house start breaking them shits open with the bat you get some fucking fights and you get this one dude who gets punched in the face he falls back and the dude behind him pushes him like def jam fight for new york into another punch and he gets taken down he starts getting well done and his head stomped there's all this crazy shit uh and then right here is one of the craziest things I've ever seen. You know those giant billboards? It said, I love the slots. And somebody went up there and started painting over it so it says, I love the sluts. And the fact that someone would go out of their way to fucking do some shit like that is absolutely just it's crazy. It's big dick energy right there, okay? Fucking with billboard advertisements. Who knows how much prison time that can get you? But fuck it. You know what I'm saying? It's funny. You know, that's going to be your defense in court. It was funny, though. And they should just let you off for like a $20 fine. It's gonna work, I promise. Even with murder, just say it was funny. Uh, after that, they started tagging shit, you know, putting in decline logos, which is like the partner group with bump fights, um, to make this thing. Putting their logos on things, spray painting them, uh, they're just, you know, tagging them everywhere. Uh, then you see a building collapse. Then after that, you get this bump called Donnie, who is another main character. I guess the, the Vegeta to Rufus being a Goku. And he gets a tattoo on his forehead that says Bum Fights. And I believe they paid him like 20 bucks. To get a tattoo on his forehead that says bum fight. It ain't going nowhere. It's a fucking tattoo. Uh, it's just the funniest thing ever. Then after that, Donnie goes and he meets up this... Uh, he meets up this homeless black chick and gets a fucking blowjob from her. Wait, uh, you scored. You got a blowjob. Don't fucking get me wrong. But it's from a homeless chick. Hey, <laughs> it's so disgusting. It's fucking gross. And even worse, she's black. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, moving on to the next clip. It shows three people vomiting in a in a row. I guess that's in reaction <laughs> to the to the blowjob. Um, then after that, it shows a one v one, and this guy he goes for some reason. It was instinct to put his head between another man's legs. It tells you a lot about his character. And the guy grabs him and he fucking just does a sit down pile driver like he's part of the fucking Heart Dynasty and just cripples this guy with that fucking power driver and starts punching him in his face it's playing truth don't lie by pimp or yeah yeah yeah, truth don't lie by pimp that's what's written right there uh then after that you get a <laughs> graffiti they're graffitiing uh, homeless people yeah they start writing graffiti on homeless people and one of the people in the background is like saying banter and at a point he's like oh they're like homes and then they start telling the bum to fucking fight him they're like hey yeah, tell him to shut up tell him to shut up it's just stupid banter uh it's pretty dumb but it's at the same time, it's pretty fucking funny that they're tagging homeless people with graffiti out of out of fucking cans, okay? They're sleeping, they start writing on their knapsacks or whatever, just graffiti. Pretty fucking funny. Uh, then you get this black guy who's there, <laughs> and they rip out his tooth, and it comes out very smooth. It, it was so disgusting, because that shit was like a good yellowish-orange and it just came out so smoothly. Like, there wasn't no blood. Like, that shit was like dead. It was a dead tooth. Woo wee that's fucking gross. Alright. Anyway, you get this oh man, this is a crazy scrap. This might be one of the greatest street fights I've seen in my life. This is definitely top ten. Uh up there with the felony fights overhand KO. So what happens is you got this bully who calls out like a victim to the fight and they start scrapping. This bully is fucking his ass 
up. He's just piecing him up. Just one after another after another. Just whooping his ass. And his victim is swinging and he's missing. But then at some point he swings and he fucking hits bullseye. Okay. Like he just absolutely cold cocks this motherfucker. And you see his whole entire head just jiggle. Like he got hit that fucking hard. He got turned to a bobblehead. And he just like his arms drop. And he's like fuck. He stuns him. He sticks him with such a. Good one. And then out of nowhere, the tides just turn. Uh, and the victim starts fighting back even better. And he just keeps on swinging haymakers at the bully. But um, the bully gets his wits back about him. And he starts wailing on him and fucking him up. And then they break it up. And, you know, the victim's face is covered in blood, bruises. It's all swollen up. He, he kind of got his ass put. But, man, he stood in there. He stood up for himself. And he fucking hit him with a good one. And that's what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it don't matter if you want to lose, you better get in there. Someone calls you, you better get in there and you get your shit in there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if you give them a busted lip or make them think twice about fucking with you, just get in there and stick a good one. I know a lot of people on my Discord to talk about, you know, some people talk about getting bullied and shit. That's some advice. If you're ever getting picked on or fucked with, you go you go tell your fucking father, okay? And if your father's not in the picture, you go tell your fucking mother. Go get some money, go take some boxing class, you go settle that shit. You know what I'm saying? Go and get yours tired of this victim mentality, you know, stop sitting there moping, okay, because crying inside your fucking bedroom while holding your knees is not going to fix it, you can wish a wish upon a fish, it's not going to go away, you got to go in there, you got to fucking settle that shit, go take some boxing lessons, go punch him in his face and knock him the fuck out, and hypothetically, you're saying, but I'm scared to lose, if you're going into a fight with the mentality that you're going to lose, then you're going to lose. You better beat it into your head that you're going to win. And you're going to kill that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Beat it into your head that you're a winner. Beat that shit into your head. And go and hit him. But say, oh, but he always hangs out with his friends. Say maybe even that's a scenario. Then you better catch his fate on one-on-one, -on -one, man. If he's walking down the hall by himself, then that's when you catch him. Get him right behind him and fucking just sucker punch him. Knock his ass out. You gotta get him at some point. He can't be around his friends 24-7. That's some advice for me. Take it from me. I live in New York. You know what I'm saying? I don't have any uh, criminal charges. Take it from me. Great advice, <laughs> Cold Raven. Um, then anyway, after that, uh, you get fucking this bum that's laying down, right? And uh, <laughs> this another bum is throwing rocks at him. And he's missing, but he's close to hitting this bum in the head with a rock. And these are some big rocks, too. I mean, these rocks are about the size of a Dragon Ball. And he throws one of them. It misses, but then it hits. Because it hits the side of the building. It ricochets and bonks him in the head. And it's funny as fuck. Um, then you get drunk Rufus, right? They get Rufus absolutely drunk. I mean, he is shit face. He looks like me after I have a drinking competition in a Discord. He's fumbling and bumbling and just dropping to the floor. And he can't even stand. And at a point, he falls into a building and hits his head. He's bleeding. And he's all fucked up. So... It really made me sit there and kind of think about my uh, my morals, you know. And, um, you know, you sit there and you're like, you know, how far is too far? You know, when people are getting hurt for you, Huma, is it really funny? It really fucking is funny. It's hilarious, you know what I'm saying? This shit is just hilarious as fuck. This guy is just a drunk mess bumping into shit. And it would only have been funny if he started breaking shit. Uh, but yeah, he's absolutely pissed drunk. This guy's gonna be fucked up in the morning. This is one of those hangovers where it sticks for you for like four days. His ass is gonna have a headache. That's to be an ass ache. Hopefully he doesn't wake up with a sore ass. You know what I'm saying? But if he does, it's fucked up shit. Uh, anyway, then you meet Bling Bling. Uh, who's another bum who's addicted to crack? And uh, at, at a point, remember that one scat clip I talked about, and when I was clip counting, here's where it is. There's like newspapers on the floor, and he's taking a shit on the sidewalk. If you can call it a shit, it literally looks like snot is coming out of his fucking ass. It's just a slimy. It's fucking disgusting. It's this slimy, mucusy fucking shit. And the worst part is he's holding his belt and he accidentally drops his belt in his own mucus shit. And he just picks it up like it's nothing. Uh, and he starts talking about how he was abducted by aliens, how he had the first kind, the second kind, and the third kind. Uh, and I started questioning myself at this point. I was like, is he a crackhead? Then he pulls out an entire fistful of crack cocaine. I'm like, I think he's a fucking crackhead. Uh, then he pulls out his crack pipe and I'm like, okay... Maybe he just might be a crackhead. Then he starts smoking a crack. I'm like, okay, he's a crackhead. Um, and he hits that shit. And he starts singing some fucking reggae tunes. Like he's Bob Marley or something, man. And um, real fucked up situation. <sighs> okay. 
Then you get these two black bums that are arguing with each other or some shit. Uh... <laughs> and he, he was like, uh, one of them was like, I ain't finna fake shit for these pecker woods. If you don't know what a pecker wood is, it's like a slur for white people, uh, for poor white people in specific. And then after that, he just walks up to him and just hits the other bum in the face. And he hits him with a good shot. I mean, it was a fast one. Like, he, he threw what he meant. You know what I'm saying? Like, what he said is what he meant. And he threw it into that. He threw that punch with fucking violent intentions. And he hits him. And it was so fast. This is a homeless man throwing a punch. And it was fast for my standards. I was like, holy shit. And then the dude's just like wobbled and backing up. And he has this giant gash on his fucking face. And he's, he just doesn't even know where he is anymore. <laughs> I'm like, holy fuck, he got hit good. That was a good one. Um, after that, you get more bum hunter stuff, right? Uh, where he's putting zip ties around people's hands. Duct taping their feet. Uh, and just doing all this other shit. And uh, at a point, he tries to take down this bum. And apparently his finger got bit during the altercation of trying to take this bum down. Which, if your finger got bit by a bum, you got about two and a half minutes before your hand turns fucking green and septic. Uh, so you might as well just pull it like it's a zombie apocalypse and just cut that shit off. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I believe like Herschel from The Walking Dead just cut off the limb. Fuck it. Let's do it. That's the only way to rock out. You're done. You know, if that shit gets in your bloodstream, then it's going to get to your brain. And we know homelessness is a disease. Um, and you're going to be infected. Your teeth are going to fall out. You're going to be addicted to crack after. So, that's exactly how it works. Believe me, I'm a biologist. Uh, after that, you get some cat fights, chicks fighting, uh, plays Borderline by Happy Campers. Uh, and you get some guy fights, and it's like they're slipping and sliding everywhere like they're fighting on a fucking ice rink. Uh, then you get this guy who's dressed up as Fred Flintstone inside of a pickup truck, and it's hanging a cow's corpse from the back. Why? I don't know. But then he starts crashing into shit, crashing into street signs, just as uh, Fred Flintstone. Uh, and he crashes into porta potties. This guy doesn't give a fuck. Uh, and then you got Scooby Doo, who literally, I guess instead of the tail in the back, the tail's in the front, so it looks like a dick. And he starts swinging it in 360s in front of stores. Now, here's, now, now believe me, um, this is way too fucking far. Okay, this was way too far. Uh, here's some shit where I thought it, it was just, it was disgusting. Uh, there's like kids walking outside and he's like, you know, swinging in 360s and he starts whacking a kid with it. Haha, ha, funny, goofy, but really? You know what I'm saying? Th those themes should not be around children whatsoever, point blank, period. There's no fucking argument or discussion or, but oh, it's just a costume. No, period. There's no fucking if, ands, or buts. You know what I'm saying? That should not be around a kid. That shouldn't be done around a kid. That's not fucking funny. Uh, which sucks because it's such a great mixtape, but then we do some shit like that. And it's like, oh, but the guys, and I know that the guys who made this were like 15 or 16 and 17 at the time, but still, that, that's, that kid was like probably like 11 to 12. That's done. You know, you don't do that shit. That's some shit where you sit there, you need to get knocked the fuck out for that. You know, no, that, that's a no for me. That's a fucking no for me. Uh, but then after that, you get Scooby-Doo who's getting fucked in the ass by Fred Flintstone, who's also getting fucked in the ass by, um, Santa Claus inside of a McDonald's restaurant. So that's crazy. Uh, it's some good shit though. <laughs> uh, then, I don't know what this was, but they're on boats and they're driving up to other boats and they're flinging dead ducks. Dead, you know ducks, like the animal? They're flinging duck corpses on the boats and they're like, hey, you want a duck? Are you hungry? You want some food? And they do this to like five to six, seven, eight people just flinging these dead ducks at them and one just clocks somebody in the head. <laughs> Uh, and they keep on doing this, and one guy gets really fucking pissed. I mean, I'd imagine just got a dead duck thrown on you, but it, it's funny as shit, man. Uh, then you, they're like in a 15th world country. It's not even third world, okay? And the kids are outside, and you got this dude who's, oh, his, his teeth are fucking horrendous. I'm pretty sure they don't, he doesn't even speak English, but this is in America, by the way. So this is what makes my head even more blown away. And they put the camera on his face, and he's like, and he's like kissing the camera, and like licking it, and it's fucking gross. I mean, how do you even sanitize? You just dip the camera in bleach after that? Or do you just get a new camera? Uh, and they're laughing at it, and it's just most disgusting. You get these like wet lip prints, and all this like heavy breathing on it. It's fucking gross. <sighs> then you get another fight, where this dude just gets absolutely ragdoll tossed, you know, nothing crazy with that. Uh, and you get Rufus who gets his hands on an axe. Uh, Rufus gets his hands on a fucking axe. Uh, but good he wasn't wielding it at people, which he actually does later in the mixtape. Uh, and he starts swinging it at like these gumball machines. Well, just specifically one. Hold on, check this shit out. Is it going to come up? That one was very foamy and acidic. And regretful. Um, yeah, don't sell that on eBay. That was disgusting. Do not sell that on eBay. 
please for the love of God. Uh, but he starts swinging an axe at it like a gumball candy machine. And then uh, Donnie grabs it and just absolutely smashes it. And they start pouring gum on each other's heads. Like it's fucking, like it's raining money or whatever. So it ain't nothing too crazy. But it's kind of funny that they're actually swinging an axe. Uh, which is, it makes it even more crazy. Because you were swinging an axe at a something made of glass but could barely even fucking break it. You know, but that's bum strength. But maybe bums are strong and weak. It's like Saiyans from uh, Dragon Ball Z. You get like the lower class and the upper class elites. And Rufus doesn't seem like an elite. Except he actually does later in the mixtape. We're going to go ahead and go over that now that it hit me. Um, then you actually have Rufus who's graffitiing other bums. Uh, <laughs> and this one bum is like, hey, what are you doing, man? Stop. Stop. And then like at some point they're going back and forth. And Rufus actually convinces him with like, this persuasion 100 to, to actually let him write on him with graffiti. And he's like... Alright, fine, do it. And he just writes on him, you know, bum fights crew and all this other shit on him. So that's funny as hell. Uh, you get this chick who's dressed like Wario from fucking Mario Brothers. And it's another cat fight. She gets her whole entire uh, overalls ripped off at some point. And right here is a crazy ass street fight. You don't see this too often. Two guys, they don't know how to fight, right? Inexperienced fighters. Um, but he threw a high kick. You know, a roundhouse kick to the head. And it worked. It landed, and it knocked the other guy out. Like, and what I mean by knocked out, I don't mean he was stunned. Like, I'm talking about this guy was snoring. He was out like a fucking lullaby was just sung to him. He was done. His head bounces off the concrete. He's out, ladder-legged. And it was the sloppiest, ugliest high kick I've ever seen. But who gives a fuck? You know what I'm saying? It worked, and he won. If you can go around going like this, and that's knocking people out, who cares? You're winning. Uh, but he throws his high kick and absolutely knocks him out in a parking lot. Uh, then you get Bling Bling again, who lights his own head on fire. So there's that. Uh, you get this one bum that's showing off his teeth. Whole entire bottom row is gone. But he has like this one tooth right here. And his gums have receded to the entire point where you can see how long human teeth actually are. Okay, like human teeth, you know, are, like two to three inches long, right? Like they're good and they're actually stuck inside your jaw. And you can see that his gums receded where you can see the entire fucking thing. It looks like an elephant's tusk. It's, it's disturbing, okay? It's very fucking disturbing. Um, after that, you get this guy, this black guy, who's fighting this other guy. Uh, and he has this weird-ass stance. Again, he's fighting like he's Liu Kang. He's like this, like this weird-ass fucking bullshit-ass Mortal Kombat stance. And he just keeps on sticking the other guy with a jab. And he just keeps jabbing him out and just jabbing him out. And he's sticking him good. Uh, and he ends up whooping his ass. That You know, who cares how you fight? If you're whooping ass, you're whooping ass. Um, after that, it skips to a, a deer that's dead. It's roadkill, but they have a cigarette in the deer's mouth, and you see it smoking. Um, now, we're going to go ahead and cut off right here. 18-minute mark, running out of time, but we're going to come right back. All right, so we're back. We're going to finish this up. I'm giving my review at the end. Uh, so right here, you get a David versus Goliath battle, but, you know, they're both black, so we're going to call it Devon versus Jamal battle. <laughs> uh, but the, Devon is like 340 pounds. I just look at him. You can tell that that's a big motherfucker versus a small dude. And the bigger dude is like 340. The smaller guy is like 160. Tiny ass dudes. I'm sitting there, I'm like, I wonder who's going to win this fight. Well, lo and behold, the bigger dude just starts throwing him around like he's a fucking baby. Uh, just starts treating him like a toddler. Keeps punching him in his back and his spine. Like, alright, done, we're done, we're done. He just keeps hitting him. He doesn't give a fuck. Absolutely beats the shit out of him. Um, you got this skit where it's Rufus sitting down. And he asks Angela, I believe that's the name, the hot ass fucking, the bum fights babe. Uh, to go get him a beer. She goes to the fridge. She takes off her top. Puts on some brawl. Uh, puts on a brawl. Puts on some brawl. What the fuck am I talking about? Uh, and gets him a beer. And after she gets him a beer, she's like acting sexually attracted to him. And like she like takes off her shorts and she throws it at him. And he throws the shorts to the side. He's like this. Reading his newspapers. And she's like trying to like, you know, put it down and put her tits in his face. And he's like <laughs> getting pissed. Like, get away. He's like reading the newspapers still. Uh, and then she's like putting her ass in his face and all this shit. And he gets, he just keeps getting more and more pissed because he's trying to read his newspapers. Uh, so right there, he's not a simp and he's fucking based. Doesn't give a fuck. That's just some great shit right there. Uh, then it shows uh, Rufus running headfirst into some more shit as per usual. Absolutely breaks his head through some glass looking thing. What's well, plastic but kind of breaks like glass. I uh, get a big ass mosh pit brawl. Now, here we go. This is fight of the year. This is like if Anderson Silva fought GSP in their primes. You got Rufus versus Donnie. The bum fights tattoo dude versus the main character. This is Goku versus Vegeta. Uh, and as you would know, Goku won. 
Uh, well, technically, Vegeta won the first battle because they jumped him. You know, Krillin and Gohan actually jumped in. And Goku was done because Kaioken wore his body down so he couldn't fight. So, Vegeta won. But then Maja Vegeta also blindsided him. So, it's Vegeta 2-0 against Goku. You let me know in the comment section down below. But at the end of the day, the point I'm trying to get to is um, Rufus grabs him by his neck. He's like, you're not down for the cause. Punches him in his forehead. And he grabs him. He punches him in his fucking jaw. And when he hits him in the jaw, this dude falls down, like, immediately. Just, like, the split second falls down, and he is fucking done. Uh, and then Rufus starts choking him out. And uh, at a point, he lets him go. <laughs> and they zoom in, and his ankle is broken. Donnie broke his ankle when he got knocked out. Because the way he fell, he fell on his ankle. And his ankle is twisted the opposite way. It is fat as shit. It looks like a baby's stomach. And it's all swollen, and it's purple. It's, it's, his ankle is broken. <laughs> and and Rufus it just doesn't believe that his ankle's broken. He was like, "Well, he's such a pussy. What he can't take a broken ankle?" <laughs> he's like, "Big deal. Whatever. Who gives a fuck?" And he's like, "I'm gonna show him what a broken ankle really feels like." And he grabs the axe and he, he's gonna he's gonna attempt to murder him with the fucking axe. And it's just the craziest shit. Then the ambulance show up and they put him in the truck or whatever and they take his ass away. It shows a limping, starving dog. Um, with one of her paw, then it shows a, a, like a dead dog, I'm assuming probably maybe the same dog, uh, but it's being eaten by maggots because it's dead. Um, then it shows knee surgery, which I'm pretty sure has nothing to do with Donnie because Donnie broke his ankle, not his knee. Uh, which is, this is the only gore clip in here, it just shows knee surgery. Then after that, it shows uh, more homeless people getting tied up. It was funny because the way they did it was he just zip-tied this guy's ankles and hands, and he just walked away, and he's just standing there looking clueless. Oh, not standing there, sitting. Um, then it ends with Rufus going on a big fucking rant about, uh, Donnie's ankle. How he was saying it was fake. He was saying that he was faking an injury, saying that he was faking having his ankle broken and all this other shit. And it's just the funniest rant they hear. Um, now with that being said, that's Bum Fights Volume 1, man. And it ends right after that. Um, it was so fucking good. Uh, with the exclusion of that one clip with the Scooby-Doo dick, uh, it was such a good mix. It's such a fucking good mixtape. I mean, my words alone cannot describe it. It's literally one of a kind. And thank God there's four of them. And there's just nothing out there like this. There never will be. They're going to have guys who may have to try to, like, I guess, make their own version of it years down the line. But it'll never just be this. It is this. There was character. There was personality. There was gimmick. There was just everything about it. There was the 2000s. It was live. It was gritty. It was in your fucking face. It was against the rules. You know? And that's what it's about. It was just everything you want. It was everything good. <sighs> Man, it was so fucking great. I mean... I might just watch it again. I, I might even skip out on editing this video right now. And just watch it one last time and then start working on the video. It is just so fucking good. It's amazing. 11 out of 10. This is the best mixtape you can get your hands on. Uh, and what's crazy is the second one is just as good as the first. Now, I didn't watch the third or the fourth one. But I remember the fucking second was amazing as well. Uh, it's one of a kind, man. You need to watch this. Man, woman, whoever's watching. Maybe you fucking dropped your phone in front of your toddler and it's just looking at it. A jewel coming from its mouth. Put your toddler on to bum fights. This is some good shit, man. Uh, Uncensored version is going to be on Patreon. And if you're Rise and Conquer, you'll be able to see almost the entire thing. I'm just going to cut out, obviously, the part with the penis and a couple of the sexual themes. But you'll be able to watch almost the entire thing because I just want to put y'all on to this shit, okay? <sighs> man. This is some good shit. Anyway, man, this is the best mixtape by far. You cannot die. You're not allowed to die unless you have watched Bump Fights. After that, then die. Okay, fine. Go ahead, die. But before that, don't die. I'm your boy, Cole Raven. I'm going to catch you the fuck later. Peace.